got to say, I did support the Iraq war. Do you remember that, Ian? Oh, yes. Back in the day, I supported going into Iraq, but I didn't really know why. It was all based in fear. If they can get you scared, then that's all it takes. All right, so we're going to go through these items on the list from the Daily Beast about the most gruesome moments in the CIA torture reports. You can have a better understanding of what was allegedly going on. 855 450 free if you'd like to share your thoughts with us on torture. Did you support it and did you change your mind or not? 855 450 free. Hi, I'm Sam Nussbaum, WellPoint's Chief Medical Officer. We proudly support the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Join us in working together to provide children with a healthier start in life. Visit marchofdimes.org. We've been patiently waiting. Waiting while you tried to ignore us. Waiting while you acted like we didn't exist. Waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio. Now at your fingertips. Fossilized evidence reveals the Spazosaurus was the largest doofus ever to roam the Earth. And a new tandem mobility scooter is released. This is the Onion Week in Review, dammit, and we're going to need you to demonstrate a little decorum. Got it? This week, economists confirm that the booming tear gas industry continues to lead the world's economic recovery. Financial experts confirm that the growing demand for tear gas in countries like Turkey, Brazil, and Greece has increased over 20% annually over the past few years and is anticipated to continue playing a major role in the world economy. The market for tear gas just keeps sustaining itself and growing. We can only hope that more people demand tear gas in the coming months and the recovery will be here sooner than we thought. In other news, a community is devastated by the sight of an old man struggling up some steps. A stack of unused CDRs turns five years old and this shitty zoo is really promoting the hell out of their new fruit bat. Your diligence and patience have been noted. Prove yourself further at theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls toll-free. Also, we'll continue to go over some of the horrors. We've just barely scratched the surface 
according to the t- CIA torture report, over 500 pages long, on what allegedly really happened, or at least another version of the story, one that you're not going to get from the CIA directly. Uh, this is uh, some sort of committee, the Senate Intelligence Committee, has, uh, has reviewed the CIA's detention and interrogation programs and has determined that the CIA has been lying to everybody. The to... government investigated itself and found out that it was lying. <laughs> yep. Wow. To, to itself. <laughs> uh, that's how crazy, you know, things can be with the federal government. So we're going to continue that list. The toll-free number tonight is 855-453-FREE for your comments. You can share with us your thoughts on torture. Have you changed your mind about it over time? And you can also bring up anything. If you believe in the ideas of liberty like I do, you probably have had the experience that I have of watching movies and reading books where it's you can sort of see the underlying statist collectivist propaganda that's inside of it. And that makes it it can make it difficult to immerse yourself in the story. Well, one of the one solution to that is enjoying liberty oriented entertainment. I listened to one of the best pieces of audio theater I've uh, heard recently, and it's uh, it's so good I'd call it an audio movie, like played out on the uh, screen of your mind. It has big name actors: Skandar Keens of Chronicles of Narnia, James Cosmo of Braveheart, Billy Boyd of Lord of the Rings, Joanne Froggatt of Downton Abbey. Uh, the the uh, it's a CD set, and it's called In Freedom's Cause. And it's one of the greatest stories of the struggle of freedom in recorded history, the story of William Wallace and Robert the Bruce. It's like Braveheart, only it's historically accurate. History has uh, been gutted and sanitized, and Freedom's Cause brings history alive for kids and adults in a wholesome way. This is the kind of thing that you can give to any young person and be uh, happy about that. You can give the gift of freedom this year to your loved ones. I'm going to call this the Liberty Gift of the Season, as a matter of fact, in freedomscause.com. And we've got a special offer for Free Talk Live listeners. Use coupon code FTL to get the family four-pack of CDs for half price in freedomscause.com. Coupon code FTL. All right, let's go to your phone calls and thoughts. Uh, Nick is in Pittsburgh. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Johnny, Ray, and Mark. Hey, how are you? Hey, Nick. Good. Go ahead. Good. First time caller, first time listener. Just okay. got put on to you guys. Love what you're doing. Welcome. Love for the uh, the people that stand for liberty. It's uh it's a pretty great thing to see. Cool. Uh, wish there was more of us. Thanks. Just like you. And the reason I wanted to call in was because it seems to be that uh, the Facebook that you guys have posted this decorated marine holding up a sign. That basically said you don't join to to put in your opinions or ideology. You join to serve. And uh, the the meme, the title of the meme was that this these are the people that are coming for your guns when they attempt to abolish the Second Amendment and mm-hmm. push people possibly into FEMA camps and uh, the status mentality. What I question in these people in these status is uh, is their own morality and their own consciousness because these people, these status, these henchmen, these political henchmen are really just order followers. And at what point? Does their unconscious morality override following the order of the state? Or it's a lot easier part not part to. The... If you work for the government, it's very diff. It's very easy. It's very difficult to go against the flow, and very easy to just sort of follow orders. Right. It's what one person says right now in this moment might be different from what they actually do in the moment where they're being given the order. Interestingly enough, I know you said you're a new listener, so you probably weren't tuned in. I think it was what about a week ago when this guy or someone claiming to be the guy in the picture called the show out of the blue. Uh, so again, dude claiming to be the guy who's in the picture, claiming that you know he didn't make the meme, obviously, but it was his original sign. He said that, that those words on the sign that he was holding up uh, about how you join to serve, et cetera, et cetera, were his original words. It wasn't like it was Photoshopped yeah. in that in that Specifically way. Specifically about the conflict and uh, potential conflict in Syria. And we brought up the, you know, the fact that here uh, in the United States after Hurricane Katrina, that there were members of the U.S. military, in this case I think it was the National Guard in that, in that instance, uh, that were going house to house and confiscating guns from people. And he said so- he would never do that. He said that he wouldn't, but at the same time, he also qualified the statement, Mark, by making some sort of statement about, like, well, what was the reason right. that they were taking the gun? And so that, as long as the reason given was per- persuasive to him, he would engage in it. And that was his answer now when he wasn't actually facing the actual order being given. Yeah, and that's what I pointed out to them. So if they tell you some story that's good enough for you, you'll do it. 
And that's the difficulty is is that we get sp- just the people in the military and we regular citizens get spoon fed stuff. And it may or may not be true. You never know. Um, I'm sorry, Ian. Did you say something about Photoshop? Were all those? W- did the man claim that the words were no any were, different from no? Okay. The those, words those on his, his signs, words. just to be clear, so the, the picture we're talking about was posted to the Facebook page, what, so about a week and a half ago, something like, yeah, that, something like that, by Mark, and it's a meme that has a photo of a Marine holding a sign. Is he a Marine? I didn't know that. I thought he was- That's what Nick said. The Army. Nick, you said he was a yeah, Marine. Yeah, he right? seemed to be- yeah, he seemed to be in a Marine, a uh, dressed Marine. Okay. Not, in, not in the battle dress uniform, but the actual dress uniform of a Marine. I'll take your word for and it. I wouldn't know. Looking at his chest, he seemed to be fairly decorated, probably a tour yeah. or two overseas, I would imagine. He's a sergeant, and I think he had done two tours, if I remember Sounds correctly. Right. right. And this is assuming this is the guy, right? Like, he, he was very believable, but, you know, yeah, somebody yeah. who called in. He played the role You could well. be Napoleon, for all I know. What was most striking? <laughs> what was most striking to me about that that picture and his words was the end when he says to get a job. Um, I'm happy to say I have a job. (laughs) And and he unfortunately doesn't, you know, if all he is is a U.S. Marine, then that doesn't satisfy my requirements Aren't for you, having a job. You're a former Marine, right? Yeah, I'm a former Marine. Okay. And and when I was a Marine, I was a guy on welfare living on government handouts. Mm, good point. I didn't have a job because— That's harsh, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I was doing things, but I, I was doing things, and I was doing things that I maybe would rather have not have done just because I like to leave, lead a life of leisure— but you have to have somebody ask you to do those things and then get the money from them voluntarily for it to be a real job to me. If I'm just doing stuff and then demanding money for it, that's not a job. So that guy, unless he's you know, delivering pizzas on the side or something, he doesn't have a job. And he needs to get a job. He needs to stop living off the backs of Americans. Tell well, it, brother. I wasn't that tough on him, Johnny Ray. But <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Ray can do it, man. He was uh, formerly in the military, so, and specifically the Marines. Nick, uh, any further thoughts you want to share on this? Uh, I'd like to get your opinion and input on uh, colonizing. There are people that are discussing through various uh, forms of web services uh, colonizing and trying to set an example for a free humanity. These are people that like myself, believe that they're sovereign beings. And if you look at the word sovereign itself, it really just means to be above rulership of anyone. Uh, Do you believe that you're a sovereign being? Yeah, I like the idea of a sovereignty. I, I think that the the concept, as I understand it, is that you are your own king of your own domain, and no one else. You know, no, you're not in charge of right. anybody but you. Uh, I like that idea. And there are people who are coming together. In fact, uh, the Free State Project is a great destination for people who love liberty. That's the reason why we're all together here in the studio tonight. Johnny Ray, myself, and Mark, we're all movers as part of the Free State Project. Have you heard about that yet? Uh, I have, yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, what I would go, what I would go into, uh, and to tell the listeners that that the battle of revolution doesn't have to come by way of war. It's actually a battle of the internal self and the internal consciousness. Because mm. if you can create inside yourself an internal monarchy of the mind, then you can create a peaceful external anarchy in society. It's the micro as to the macro effect. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, the uh, the Muslims, our Muslim friends would call that the internal, uh, or the greatest jihad, actually, is the one that's uh, on the inside. So the Free State Project, just for our listeners who haven't heard about it, is the idea of gathering 20,000 liberty-minded people, people that understand what freedom really means, that, you know, you have to let others be free in order for you to be allowed to be free, and that, you know, being free means to not harm anybody else, to, you know, to honor your agreements and to do no harm. And to people that understand those ideas are coming to New Hampshire. We've got over 1,600 people that are here now. Over 16,000 have pledged to make the move, and we want to get to 20,000. So hope to see you up this way. And, Nick, thanks for your call tonight. Call anytime. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. We've got Skype as well. Skype username is lrn.fm. If you want to check out more about the Free State Project, go to freestateproject.org. We'll continue with more on the CIA torture memo coming up. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. 
Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting bloc and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free to bring up whatever you want. CIA torture. The Pirate Bay is down. We'll talk about that later on if we get the chance. Also coming up, body cams. Johnny Ray has changed his mind. He is now opposed, as I understand it, to the police body cams. And I want to find out why that is. I'm positively Ray. opposed to okay, it. Okay, all right, because we'll get into that, because I feel like it's a good idea. So maybe you can persuade me, Johnny. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype. Skype in at username lrn.fm. So the CIA torture report is out, and it is 500 pages long. According to the story over at Reason.com, basically it's, you know, pretty clear that the CIA's been lying, lying to you, lying to the media, 
lying to the executive branch, lying to the legislative branch, and lying to the Department of Justice. Basically lying to anyone who would ask them about Dick Cheney anything. doesn't feel lied to. <laughs> right. Well, just a bunch of hooey. Yeah, well, Dick Cheney said the report was a bunch of hooey without having actually read any of the report. So the story over the <laughs> DailyBeast.com... Dick Cheney always told the truth when he was in the White House. <laughs> Uh, the DailyBeast.com has the most gruesome moments of this report, and it starts out with what everybody knows about, the waterboarding. The claim is that the CIA said they've only done it to three detainees. However, the Senate report describes a photograph of a well-worn waterboard surrounded by buckets of water at a site where the CIA said they've never subjected a detainee to the procedure. So that's a few extra. Was this just uh, you know, a photo op waterboard, or did they actually use the device? You tell me. In a meeting with the CIA in 2013, the agency was not able to explain the presence of this waterboard. Well, where'd that come from? <laughs> uh, contrary to the CIA's description to the department, so the first part was called well-worn waterboards, this section called near drowning. Contrary to the CIA's description to the Department of Justice, the Senate report says the waterboarding was physically harmful, leading to convulsions and vomiting. During one session, detainee Abu Zubdaya became completely unresponsive with bubbles rising through his open, full mouth. Ugh. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was waterboarded at least 183 times, which the Senate report describes as escalating into a series of near drownings. 183 times! Now this is a pretty horrifying experience from the uh, the fe the people like Man Cow, the talk radio guy who submitted himself to being waterboarded, and I feel like there was a rap artist who did it too. I just am forgetting who it was, uh, but it was just a horrifying and and very difficult uh, experience. Why you would need to feel the need to do that to a human being once, let alone 183 times? Because they've got that piece of information they aren't giving up. It's crazy. The thing is, is if they give you a piece of information, it's just as likely to be wrong False. as it is right. Right. The dungeon like Probably more likely to be wrong. Salt Pit. Opened in uh, September of 20 2002, this poorly managed detention facility was the second site opened by the CIA after the 9-11 attacks. The Senate report refers to it by the pseudonym Cobalt, but details of what happened there indicate that it's a notorious black site in Afghanistan known as the Salt Pit. Although the facility kept few formal records, the committee concluded that untrained CIA operatives conducted unauthorized, unsupervised interrogation there. A Senate aide who's getting some practice under their yeah. belt. Senate aide who briefed reporters on the condition that he not be identified said that the Cobalt site was run by a junior officer with no relevant experience and that this person had issues in his background that should have disqualified him from working for the CIA at all. The aide didn't specify what those issues well, were, could, yeah. <laughs> but suggested the CIA should have flagged them. The committee found that some employees at the site lacked proper training and had histories of violence and mistreatment of others. Standing on broken legs, in t November of 2002, Ugh. a detainee who had been held partially nude and chained to the floor died, apparently from hypothermia. This case appears similar to that of Ghul Rahman, who died of similarly explained causes at the Afghan site known as the Salt Pit in November 2002. The site was also called the Dark Prison by former captives. The aide said that the Cobalt site, uh, the the aide said that the Cobalt site was dark, like a dungeon, and that experts who visited the site said they'd never seen an American prison where people were kept in such conditions. The facility was so dark in some places. Can you imagine? I mean, that's a heck of a statement. We have never seen an American prison that were kept that was kept in such conditions. The facility was so dark in some places that guards had to wear headlamps, while other rooms were flooded with bright lights and white noise to disorient detainees. At the Cobalt facility, the CIA also forced some detainees who had broken feet or legs to stand in stress-inducing positions, despite having earlier pledged that they wouldn't subject those wounded individuals to treatment that might exacerbate their injuries. Non-stop interrogation. Starting with Abdu Zabdaya and following with other detainees, the CIA deployed the harshest techniques from the beginning without trying to first elicit information in an open, non-threatening manner, the committee found. The torture continued nearly non-stop for days or weeks at a time. The CIA instructed personnel at the site that the inter interrogation of Zabdaya, who'd been shot during his capture, should take precedence over his medical care. The committee found leading to an infection in the bullet wound incurred during his, uh, his capture. Zabdaya lost his left eye while in custody. How does that happen? The CIA's instructions also ran contrary to how it told the Justice Department the prisoner would be treated. 
forced rectal feeding, and worse. What the hell is forced rectal feeding? At least five detainees were subjected to rectal feeding or rectal hydration without any documented medical need. Quote, while IV infusion is safe and effective, one officer wrote, rectal hydration could be used as a form of behavior control. I see. It's unpleasant. Others rectal were de- feeding. Yeah. Rectal feeding? This is like pumping oatmeal into somebody's no, just anus? water into, uh, it's a way of hydrating you by putting basically fluids up your anus. Um, this is, if you won't drink or something like this that? This is rape. Or if you don't disallow them from drinking. Others were de- You're not going to drink for two weeks, buddy. That's, that you will die. Well, no, because we're going to be hydrating you anally. Ah, yes. Others were deprived of sleep, which could involve staying awake for at least 180 hours, sometimes standing, sometimes with their hands. I don't know how they did that. I mean, they must have just taken, you know, like little micro naps because you can't stay awake that long. Sometimes with their hands shackled above their heads. Some detainees were forced to walk around naked or shackled with their hands above their heads. In other instances, naked detainees were hooded and dragged up and down corridors while subjected to physical abuse. At one facility, detainees were kept in total darkness and shackled in cells with loud noise or music and only a bucket to use for waste. Lost detainees. Well, that's just camping. While the CIA has publicly held that about 100 detainees, the committee, excuse me, uh, the CIA has publicly held that it had about 100 detainees. The committee found that at least 119 people were in the agency's custody. The fact is they lost track, and they didn't really know who they were holding, the Senate aide said, noting that investigators found emails in which CIA personnel were surprised to find some people in their custody. Hey, whoa! The CIA also determined that at least 26 of its detainees were wrongfully held. Due to the agency's poor record keeping, it may never be known precisely how many detainees were held and how they were treated while in custody, says the committee. No blockbuster intelligence. The report will conclude the CIA's interrogation techniques never yielded any intelligence about imminent terrorist attacks. Investigators didn't conclude that no information came from the program at all. Rather, the committee rejects the CIA's contention that information came from the program that couldn't have been obtained through other means. Uh, That was rejected. That was what the CIA was claiming. We got information that you wouldn't have gotten through any other way besides torture. And the committee says that's nonsense. The Senate aide said, quote, I think part of the the sort of the argument was what what is torture and what isn't torture. These things do sound like torture to me. But, um, for instance, uh, you know, talking to somebody for too long, these uh, never ending interrogations or whatever. Is that torture? It's certainly not going to be pleasant. Right. Like, please go away and let me take a nap. Um, no, no naps while we're interrogating you, that kind of thing. So I think that there's uh, sleep deprivation is definitely torture. Right. But where does it start and where does it end? One night. Good question. I don't know, right? Like these are the, you need to have sleep every twenty four hours, basically. Sure, that's I, I won't disagree with that. Um, but what if you only let them get two hours? So I mean, I think that there's I, I would agree that there's a blurry line, but I would also say that a lot of this stuff stepped over it. When you put detainees through these torture sessions, they will say whatever they can to get the interrogations to stop. Sure, said the Senate aide. The Senate Intelligence Committee reviewed twenty cited examples of intelligence quote successes that the CIA identified from the interrogation program and found there was no relationship between cited counterterrorism success and the techniques used. Furthermore, the information gleaned during torture sessions merely corroborated information already available to the intelligence community from other sources, including reports, communications intercepts, and information from law enforcement agencies, said the committee. The CIA told policymakers in the Department of Justice that the information from torture was unique or otherwise unavailable. Yeah, that was how, well, that was what got him the whole ability to do it, was saying, oh, this is special. We know that we said that torture didn't work before, but now we have new techniques that really do work. Such information comes from, quote, the kind of good national security tradecraft that we rely on to stop terrorist plots at all times, said the Senate aid. In developing the enhanced interrogation techniques, the report said the CIA failed to review the historical use of coercive interrogations. The resulting techniques were described as discredited coercive interrogation techniques, such as those used by torturous regimes during the Cold War to elicit false confessions, according to the committee. Right, pulling out people's teeth and and that sort of thing. Um, I I still haven't heard from that person that supported torture in the past and uh, whether they still do. I mean, this is a this would be the day, right, to come out and stand by your claim that torture works. Well, so far, Dick Cheney's uh, Dick Cheney and George Bush are Dick Cheney hasn't even side. bothered to read it, and George Bush is busy painting his toes in the bathtub. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Hour number two is on the way. You can share your thoughts. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, December 9th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.79 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,212 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $353. Antiwar.com reports, in a move that is likely to add further speculation about the nature of the sites targeted, Russia's foreign ministry is publicly demanding an explanation from Israel as to why they attacked targets inside Syria on Sunday. Israel attacked around 10 sites, mostly around Damascus Airport, and while it's unclear what was hit, some reports suggested it included Russian anti-aircraft defenses which were provided to Syria. Syria and Iran both condemned the Israeli attacks too, but those are unsurprising, and Russia normally doesn't get directly involved in Israel's intermittent attacks on Syria. The Russian Foreign Ministry also pushed the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon over the attack, urging him to take steps to ensure that such attacks are not repeated. Israel, for its part, is refusing to confirm or deny the attacks, nor is it offering any explanation for what it attacked or why. They attack Syria fairly often, so from their perspective, it might not be seen as worth responding to. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday rejected BP's challenge to its multi-billion dollar settlement agreement over the 2010 Gulf of Mexico oil spill, which the oil giant complained has allowed payments to some businesses that are unable to trace their losses to the disaster. The court's decision not to hear the London-based company's appeal is the latest setback for BP, which is trying to limit payments over a disaster that killed 11 people and triggered the largest U.S. offshore oil spill. 
The action, disclosed in an unsigned order, means BP must make the payments as it continues to deal with the spill's aftermath. BP signed a 2012 settlement agreement to compensate businesses claiming financial losses due to the spill, but BP has since argued that the agreement has been interpreted improperly by Patrick Juno, the settlement fund's court-appointed administrator, forcing it to pay businesses that could not show damages. The challenge involves so-called business economic loss claims, a key part of the settlement. BP has cited various claims it wanted to contest, including a Mississippi hotel awarded more than $450,000 despite being closed for several months due to an unrelated fire, and a Louisiana nursing home awarded $662,000 despite having closed down before the spill. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. NPR reports leaders on Capitol Hill are at odds regarding a report on CIA methods, including torture, used to extract information in the so-called War on Terror. Chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Dianne Feinstein from California, has been fighting for the release of her 480-page executive summary of the report since April of this year, and it finally was scheduled for a reveal this week. But Secretary of State John Kerry called Feinstein on Friday on behalf of the White House, asking for a delay. The reason for the request is a general fear from both sides of the political aisle that details in the report will put American personnel in danger overseas and incite further violence from extremists. Feinstein's counterpart in the House, Intelligence Committee Chair Mike Rogers from Michigan, appeared on CNN's State of the Union on Sunday to express his concern about the release. Rogers said, I think this is a terrible idea. Foreign partners are telling us this will cause violence and deaths. Our own intelligence community has assessed that this will cause violence and deaths. Feinstein, however, defended her position in the interview, saying, We have to get this report out. Anybody who reads this is going to never let this happen again. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A severe allergic reaction causes Florida to swell up to twice its normal size. And a Ford assembly line worker is thinking about asking out a cute welding robot from work. It's time for the weekly feature with over 14 subliminal and completely unapologetic cues to purchase Energizer batteries. This is the Onion Week in Review. Area man Brett Lucier told reporters Tuesday he was left winded after placing a particularly lengthy lunch order at a local Wendy's. A weary Lucier said he struggled to get through the seven item order and even suffered a cramp while asking for the spicy chicken sandwich. I thought I was just about done after I ordered that junior bacon cheeseburger, but I was able to get that frosty in there too. And in this week's op-ed pages, a local man talks about how he was always just one of those kids who was off by himself taking cats apart to see how they work. In your hands right now are the 24 AA Energizer lithium batteries you were subconsciously manipulated into purchasing. We make no apology. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We'll, of course, take your calls about anything you would like to discuss, especially if you want to talk about torture and your feelings about it, because according to the government's own report now from the Senate Intelligence Committee, the CIA torture program, the renditions, that stuff didn't really result in any information that couldn't have been gleaned and didn't and wasn't gleaned or, you know, or it did not result in information that wasn't gleaned through other means. So you can go uh, and you can learn more about this. Reason.com has a story about it. We shared that with you earlier tonight. And the Daily Beast has what they call the most gruesome moments in this 500-page torture report. We're getting through, we've gotten through most of the Daily Beast uh, piece here, but they're talking also not just about the gruesome moments, but about how the report didn't really reveal anything that was 
or the the torture didn't reveal anything that could have been gleaned otherwise and about some of the lies. This is a Senate this, report, right? That's correct. The CIA was uh, was telling 500-page report. In developing the enhanced interrogation techniques, the report said the CIA failed to review historical use of coercive interrogations. The resulting techniques were described as, quote, discrediting coercive interrogation techniques such as those used by torturous regimes during the Cold War to elicit false confessions. According to the committee, the CIA acknowledged that it never properly reviewed the effectiveness of these techniques, despite the urging of the CIA Inspector General, Congressional Leadership, and the National Security Advisor, Condoleezza Rice. Contractors and shrinks. The CIA relied on two outside contractors who were psychologists with experience at the Air Force's Survival, Evasion, Resistance, and Escape School to help develop, run, and assess the interrogation program. Neither had experience as an interrogator, nor any specialized knowledge of al-Qaeda, counterterrorism, or relevant linguistic expertise, the committee found. So these they were, couldn't speak the language? These were the two outside contractors who were psychologists that had no real uh, qualifications. Psychologists are torturing people? Apparently. Good Lord. In 2005, those same two psychologists formed a company. And following this, the CIA outsourced virtually all aspects of the interrogation program to them. The company was paid more than $80 million Whoa! by the CIA. Lies Might to torture somebody for $80 million too. The president. An internal report by, and you were questioning my integrity last night, Mark? It's crazy. An internal report by the CIA known as the Panetta Review found that there were numerous inaccuracies in the way the agency represented the effectiveness of interrogation techniques and that the CIA misled the president about this. Now, that's their boss because the CIA is an executive branch, so the president would Gotta be in Got to lie to him in order to get these jobs done, you know? Uh, let's see. So they misrepresented that. Uh, the CIA misled the president. Their records also contradict the evidence that the agency provided of some thwarted terrorist attacks and the capture of suspects, which the CIA linked to the use of these enhanced techniques. The Senate's report also concludes that there were cases in which the White House questions were not answered truthfully or completely. Cover-ups. In the early days of the program, CIA officials briefed the leadership of the House Intelligence Committee. Few records of that session remain, but Senate investigators found a draft summary of the meeting written by CIA lawyers that notes lawmakers question the legality of these techniques. But the lawyer deleted that line from the final <laughs> version of the summary. The Senate investigators found that Jose Rodriguez, once the CIA's top spy and a fierce defender of the interrogation program, made a note on the draft approving of the deletion. Short and sweet, Rodriguez wrote of the newly revised summary that oh, failed God. to mention lawmakers' concerns about the legality of the program. Threats to mothers. CIA officers threatened to harm detainees' children, sexually abuse their mothers, and, quote, cut a detainee's mother's throat. In wow. addition, several detainees were led to believe they would die in custody. With one, This is what I expect from ISIS. Like that, mm. those kind of threats and the, that sort of thing? That's what I expect from them. Well, again, I've always wondered about ISIS. You know, are they a CIA program? I don't What's know. What's the deal with them? In addition, several detainees were led to believe they would die in custody, with one told he would leave in a coffin-shaped box. Detainees wouldn't see their day in court because, quote, we can never let the world know what I have done to you, said one interrogator. And finally, sexual assault by interrogators. Well, this that's what this uh, this hydration, anal hydration or whatever you called it, mm -hmm. anal feeding, um, that's what that was. If you are... Forcing sexual somebody, assault. Yeah, if you're forcing something up somebody's butt without their permission, sorry, that's where we're at. Officers in the CIA's detention and interrogation program included individuals who the committee said, quote, among other things, had engaged in inappropriate detainee interrogations, had workplace anger management issues, and had reportedly admitted to sexual assault. So I imagine that just scratches the surface on the amount of sexual assault kind of uh, torture. That How many on. people work in the United States government that admit to sexually assaulting people? I don't know. That's crazy. So there you go. That's uh, a, a bit of an excerpt from the 500-page report, which is now available for you to peruse. How much of it has been redacted, I don't know. I have heard that uh, portions of it have. So we don't even know the whole story. There's a very powerful worldview that is going through America, certainly, that is that this all this torture report is not going to change these people's opinions because they feel like there has to be somebody who is above the law. And 
obviously that person needs to be an American because <laughs> well, the, who he, else? Then he's like me. Uh, there has to be somebody who can who can pull the trigger who doesn't work by uh, committee, doesn't make decisions by committee. I'm with you on that. But has got a head and some agency of his own and some executive power who can who can do what needs to be done. And as long as you have that mindset and you're willing to tax people, you're willing to coerce people, you're willing to put up with first all of us getting stolen from in order to fund this this thing. As long as you you put up with that, you're guaranteed to get a monster yeah, at the this end. Is, mm-hmm. that, that's an, what you're describing is an incubator for a tyrant. Um, and no, they may not rise beyond their little fiefdom that's been ascribed to them by the government. That doesn't mean they're not a tyrant. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're, you know, when you create a situation like you're describing, that's that's what that's all about. Well, we, well, we don't have a king because we vote for our king. <laughs> right. Every four years, new king. So you can share your thoughts with us on the torture thing. Mark, you had specifically asked for somebody who still believes in torture to call into the show. Or maybe somebody who's had their mind changed about this. And, you know, what was it that brought you from point A to point B? Well, I would have at one point been somebody who would have supported some level of torture. And, you know, when you're talking about that situation with the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the you've got 20 minutes to find out where the bomb is. You know, I guess I trust um, my, uh, you know, military or police to just go ahead and implement whatever torture they need to do in that circumstance and be held accountable for it later. There was an officer I remember in World War, I, you know, I don't know anything. So you are saying you still support torture? I'm saying that if somebody needs, to, if feels that torture is worth doing, that they would be willing to do it in the face of the punishment that they will get. Wait a minute. So... Would they get punished either way Ian, or only if it doesn't reveal where the bomb is? Would you be willing to lose your job and perhaps spend a couple of years in prison to save every man, woman, and child in the city of New York? I don't believe in torture. I didn't ask you that question. You're asking me if I would torture somebody? No, no. I asked you a question and you did not answer it. I asked you, would you be able, to, willing to lose your job and perhaps spend two years in prison for... Uh, saving every life of every man, woman, and child in New York City. Well, I guess it would depend on how you would save those people. Then I trust you to make the right decision. That's all I'm saying. Is, I don't is get it, it. If if the scenario is dire enough, you're allowing for the fact that that what comes after the punishment will you will take it even you will take the punishment knowing that you've done the right thing. Right. If if I'm but in charge, you're not saying that torture is the right thing, Ian. If I think torture is going to save. A, a city full of people. If I think that, well, that's what the CIA thinks. Well, I understand I'm they not think sure that. that they do really think that. Well, I, they might tell their guys that either either that well, or all just psychopaths. These these psychopaths aren't being held to standards. That see, that's the kind of that's why we have prisons. You want standards for torture? I'm confused. What are you getting at? I'm not asking for standards. Torture is not acceptable. Okay, good. You really don't understand what I'm saying. No, I don't really Okay, get it. let me make it 100% clear. If I'm in charge of some unit, I come okay. to a situation where I believe that, uh, you know, I have somebody who might have some information. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a very short time frame um, that I have to get this information because I believe that interrogation works better than torture, but I don't have a lot of time for interrogation. I'm going to go in with an axe handle. I'm going to smack him in the face a few times, and then he's going to give me what information he gives me. So and you do support torture? I, uh, or just a little smacking with an axe handle? No, Is that I not expect torture? To, I expect to go to prison for this. Okay, so you support I, torture in the if you get a spanking for it later on? No, I... The toll-free expect- number coming up. Did I'm you confused. know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. 
On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman question said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Join us on the air here. Bring up whatever's on your mind. We're talking about torture coming up. Police body cams. Johnny Ray has changed his mind. He says he's against them. And we'll find out what led him to draw that new conclusion here in a little bit. Our toll-free number that allows you to take control here, bring up whatever you want, is 855-450-FREE. You can also join us online at freetalklive.com. So do get interactive there and do it for free. If you care about online privacy, something else that's free is ProXPN. You just go and download their free app, get started with Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. ProXPN encrypts your data connection, meaning your internet service provider or the coffee shop you're sitting at. These guys are not going to know what you're doing online anymore. Right now, your ISP is probably logging all the websites you visit, and uh, they're also likely keeping those logs in some cases for up to five years. You can stop that from happening by encrypting your connection by getting ProXPN at proxpn.com FTL. Now, one account works for all of your devices simultaneously, and you can go and get started right now for free. Plus, Plus, Linux users, you can also get rolling with ProXPN. It's just a different setup process for you. The code you need to upgrade to their premium account so you can get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can access, private torrenting, and get past regionally blocked websites. The code you need is FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and the number 50, as in 50% off of the price of their annual account. It brings the price down to about 5 bucks a month, but you can save more by paying with Bitcoin 
You'll save 62% by using code FTLBTC and paying with Bitcoin for the annual account. ProXPN, by the way, doesn't keep records of your online habits, and you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use codes FTL50 or FTLBTC and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. We've been talking about torture earlier in the show, Mark. You seem to take the position that you do not support torture, that you agree that uh, with the, some of the conclusions of this new torture report that has come out, that torture does not actually provide good information. If it provides any information, it doesn't provide valuable information, that the torture that they engaged in in the last decade or so in the United States didn't actually glean information that couldn't have been or wasn't gleaned from other more legitimate intelligence sources like, you know, listening to radio communications or intercepting uh, emails or something like that. Uh, but, Mark, so it sounded like you opposed torture in the beginning portion of this show. But now, a moment ago, you said that if somebody, uh, if you've got a, if you were in charge of some police agency and that uh, you had a suspect that you believed had information that uh, would result in some sort of bomb being uncovered within the next hour. Yeah, or the whole 24 scenario. That you would slap somebody around with an axe handle. And that you're saying that is torture and that that's something you would personally do. So how can you be opposed to torture but yet say that you would participate in it? Okay. Um, what am I missing? All right. I'm going to try to help you out. I'm willing to be your foil here. First, I'd like to say I think torture is a crime. Okay? Mm, okay. And as a crime, it should be punished. Now, I would point out that if you were successful in extracting information from somebody because they just claim here that the information extracted through torture was no better than information they believe could be extracted without it, right? Or actually was given from other sources. Right. And so all I'm saying is is that I believe that as long as you're accountable for your actions, that I trust the men and women who would propose to keep us safe, uh, those folks, to make the right decisions and in, in, in a circumstance sacrifice themselves um, for what they believe in. So what you're saying is you don't support torture— but you do support people who do torture as long as they go to prison afterwards? No, I believe that if you're right, um, then you know you should get a le more lenient sentence. So in the scenario, the, the, the fantastical Hollywood scenario where you have the bad guy, right? And the bad and you've got the, the clock yeah, you is have ticking the bad down. guy. You know he's a bad guy. Well, you think you is. You think he is. Oh. That's okay. all you can know. You think you've got the bad guy. You think you've got some sh short period of time till the city blows up. You know, there's always a clock counting down in these situ situations. That in that circumstance, what is there to lose? If I walk into an interrogation room with an axe handle and I smack somebody around a few times your with humanity. it. Your uh, humanity. My, my humanity yes, is going to be blown soul. up shortly. My humanity will be lost very shortly in fire and brimstone as I go down with the ship. Mm -hmm. So who cares whether I have blown up the terrorist, um, whether I I've smacked him around a few times before he blew himself up with the uh, with the bomb. So that's so to you, it's just smacking someone around a few times. It's not torture. Okay. It, what, what it seems like you're putting a really light spin on this, as though oh well, if it was Mark in the situation, then it's just smacking somebody around with an axe handle. That's no big deal. No, I I think that I'm being about, very like, clear. You know, cutting his fingers off. I mean, you know, let's get serious here. He's got some information that you need. Maybe an axe handle just isn't far enough. I, but then, you know, everybody's got their line, right? So you wouldn't cut his fingers off. Then. I don't think I've really. I'm looking How about for breaking fingers. his fingers. I don't really. It's. I wouldn't like that in my hands. It'd be gross. Yeah, but you got that one, two, three, four, five. You know, got ten of them, so you can really put a lot of pain. You can on, hit somebody, somebody ten times with an axe handle. I'm, yeah. I'm sure of it. Okay, so you you've drawn your line at the at the axe handle. You're acting like that's not really torture. Oh no, I don't know why you're saying I don't. Yeah. I would, I'm, this is torture, okay. and I would expect if I got you know if 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 we lived through the bomb situation. And you situation, believe there should be two charges. There should be a charge for successful torture and a charge for unsuccessful torture. I do. I do. <laughs> Because I do believe that ultimately the ends does justify the means. I mean, if you get wow, the information man. out of the guy with this means, then you know, hey, you only deserve a year in jail or something. At, I, I don't think this scenario is useful just because of the question that I that I, I asked earlier. I don't think it's earlier. particularly useful either. Uh, yeah, but you, that's it, right. You it did, gives you Ian said, an opportunity to vilify his partner, which is pretty much how he's made a living for the last 12 years. I'm so. not the one supporting torture on the show, Mark. <laughs> See?
you said it's a fantastical scenario. I completely agree with you. Uh, but if you don't know that that the torture is going to get you the information, then then what's then how would you know anything if you knew? That's that the would... only reason that I would that I would cut anybody any slack for cutting somebody's fingers off. In my in my scenario, you only believe things. In my fantastic scenario, you basically know that he's got the info because you've sure. got other you've got some whatever other evidence backing you up and you know that beating him will give you the 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 information that you need in that case that will never happen yes i would i would agree i would support anyone uh beating the person i would suggest that if you did beat somebody the most likely scenario is is that you're going to get bad information and you're going to attempt to act on bad information but what difference does it make if there's a clock counting down in the next 20 minutes uh, a nuclear bomb goes off in new york city who cares oh well i guess he gave us bad info we're gonna blow up like we were without it we've got john he's in minnesota you're on free talk live john Hey, yeah, hi. I was wondering, haven't these guys ever heard of sodium pentothal? Truth serum. Uh, yes, Arnold Schwarzenegger was administered sodium pentothal in the film True Lies. <laughs> it was moving cinema. Well, I'll tell you, I know some people, you get a couple of drinks in them, they lose all their inhibitions, and they'll tell you anything you want to know. So why bother to torture them? Agree. Yeah, that's I think great... that's, that's more useful than forcing someone to stand on... Broken, broken their broken legs. leg. I agree with you, John. Thanks for the call tonight. A little persuasion can go a long way. Chemical persuasion, that's not the same as torture, right? I would say that that's torture if you decide to administer drugs to somebody without their uh, permission. Sure. I mean, you know, all this is about coercion. What level of coercion you're willing to go for? That's you, you're just willing. <laughs> you just love yourself some drugs. <laughs> Let's drug them up. You didn't get to drink any water at your house. Toll free number here, 855 450 free. You can bring up anything you want. This is Free Talk Live. Coming up, cop cameras. Johnny Ray says it's a bad idea. Why is that? We'll find out. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it, and once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world, so I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. You want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free and bring up anything you want. 855-450-FREE. That is the toll-free number. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username, it's lrn.fm. You just send a contact request and we'll approve it. Once that's approved, then you can easily dial us up on Skype and you'll sound way better than you would if you were on the telephone. So, coming up, uh, Johnny Ray will tell us about police cams. There's there's in the news, of course, the this idea that police should have body-mounted cameras on them at all times. And there's even a proposal from the federal government to help local departments fund the purchase of these body-mounted cameras. And there's some debate, especially in libertarian, liberty-minded circles, about what this means. You know, what why would the government want this? Doesn't that isn't that an indicator that this is a bad idea? So I can, I can give you plenty of reasons why the government would want to have cameras on all the police well, officers. I know. I know why one of the reasons why and we can get into that here in a moment, but I think that overall it's a good idea. Johnny Ray, you used to think it was a good idea, but you don't anymore. I, that, no, that's not necessarily true. I've really? always been I think pretty ambivalent about it. I thought you had said that you'd changed your mind and that you no longer support cops having uh, cameras on them. I before like I said, I was ambivalent. I, I kind of felt like, almost like you guys, Mark, you were describing your feelings about uh, Desert Storm. When, at the, at that time, back in 93 or whatever, I thought, well, uh, you know, I'm kind of fundamentally opposed philosophically to the government. Those ideas were just beginning to form in my head. I had at that idea, the idea that defense, national security would be better handled by private uh, firms. Okay. But I thought, well, but still, the end result is going to be pretty, pretty good. You know, we're going to have another, we're going to have Iraq and Israel in there, a couple of Western style democracies that are just going to sort of spread goodness throughout the Middle East. Yeah, I think I thought that too. Uh, it didn't happen at all. And so, what's that have to do with body cameras? Well, I don't, I just didn't think it would really, I didn't think it was necessarily that great, but I didn't think it was going to do that much harm. And now you think it will do harm? Yes. All right. We'll find out more about that here, uh, but that doesn't mean you oppose them? I do oppose them. You do them. oppose them. Okay. That's what I thought. I do oppose, I oppose them on a libertarian dogmatic level. All right. Well, hold on. It has practical I get, repercussions. I want to get into the reasons for that, uh, but first, Mark, yeah, a gift for the holiday season. Give the gift of liberty, uh, the ideas of liberty this holiday season. You know, this is hard to do. Lots of people are always calling in. How do I get my relatives to uh, understand the ideas of liberty? Well, first they have to have a foundation. And I think that infreedomscause.com is great. It's a piece of uh, historical, it's a historical fiction. It's, it's um, you know, got the story of some young boys that are sort of transported back into the time of William Wallace and Robert the Bruce. Now, everything else that occurs around them is historically accurate. But 
it's wholesome entertainment for the whole family. I think everybody's going to love it. You can, it's like a movie that you can bring along in the car and just play the audio from. It's uh, got top name actors and actresses, Joanne Froggett from Downton Abbey. Billy Boyd from Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keens from Chronicles of Narnia, James Cosmo from Braveheart. And the kids will be enthralled. My son was. I think yours will, too. Jack just thought it was awesome, loved listening to it. It's a great story. And you can get, we have a special price uh, for you. You can get the family four-pack. So you get four gifts that you can give for half price. So that's, it's a really great deal. I mean, you know, when you're talking about uh, pricing here, that's about $12.50 per set. Awesome deal. Just go to infreedomscause.com. Use coupon code FTL. There's a lot of parallels between the history of Scotland and uh, the Revolutionary War, for instance. The Declaration of Arbroath, to some extent, was what, uh, you know, the Declaration of Independence was based off of, to some extent. Infreedomscause.com. Coupon code FTL to save half price on the family four pack. Sounds like In Freedom's Cause is being voiced by some very talented people. I love that, Billy Boyd. The whole thing. Am I allowed to talk about a negative audio experience I had with bad, poor reading? Yeah, please. Because I don't want to draw any negative associations to our sponsor. (laughs) Uh, I would dearly love to listen to Murray Rothbard at work, but the Mises.org, the free Mises.org audio is just unlistenable. The reader they have. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Is it an AudioVox recording? uh, I don't know what that is. AudioVox is an organization that takes books that are in public domain. Is it the same or similar to LibriVox? I'm sorry, LibriVox. Yes, I know what that is. No, it's not LibriVox. Okay, it's. I'm not going to say the guy's name. It's the reader. He's just. He's a. He's a. He's a. He's bad, huh? He's a libertarian luminary. He's a great writer and a man of wonderful ideas. He's reading Rothbard's stuff, and it's terrible. I can't listen to it. I wow, want to listen to it so bad. Is it the audio quality or the uh, read? The quality? delivery. Is he very okay. stilted? What is he doing? It is. Yeah, it's yeah. it's fairly stilted. He the the guy wants to just. Just the facts, just the words. You know, I just want to get the words out clearly, mm. and I, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but he doesn't it's, have a, he it's doesn't incredibly have a cadence boring. It's follow, he, can't, he can't follow his cadence. I'm not sure what the right right word to describe. The cadence may be. be so regular that mm-hmm. five minutes have passed, and I realize so that boring. I haven't been listening. Wow. Wow. So this is a this is a a so recommendation not recommending the to Mises, Mises audio to to Mises.org to get a new reader for all that raw. They can afford it, can't they? I mean, can't they afford to hire somebody who can read? Well, I mean, maybe they haven't got the feedback yet. By the way, you know, people can go listen to a market for liberty at book.freetalklive.com. Oh, that was another terrible reader that uh, I couldn't listen to. <laughs> that was I thought it was great. I thought Ian did a great job with I that. I did that one. Yeah, a lot of people have said nice things. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been listening well, I've to got practice reading. You know? I've been listening to uh, The Kingdom of God is Within You by Tolstoy. Leo Tolstoy. Whoa. Um, and that's from, that's LibriVox. Oh, God. Is it, bad? is it bad? It makes me want to go and do the reads for these things so that there's a good oh, version wow. of it. It's time consuming to do that, too. It is. Like, if you're going to spend the time to do that, you should at least be able to do it. Like to com- perform in a why? I mean, acceptable why, why, manner. Why do you think that it you should be able to do that? The people that have the time, I mean, this is practice, right? They're going to get better. You shouldn't be practicing on something that you are releasing publicly, I don't think. Well, well I can't tell you, man. Some of the LibriVox readers, though, are very good. In fact, the majority, I spent a couple of seasons listening to LibriVox selections, and I would say the majority of them, of the readers, satisfied me. So what is the LibriVox? They read non-copyrighted? They read public things? domain okay. stuff. Okay, gotcha. So um, let's talk about the cop cameras. There has been a lot of discussion as of late after the protests that are continuing, from what I understand. The Berkeley protests we talked about earlier this week are still going on, and the police are continuing to be violent. I heard Oakland maybe is uh, you know, there's something happening there too. So the poli- uh, you know, the people are out in the streets protesting police brutality, and the police are giving them a taste of police brutality <laughs> as uh, as a result of that. And in the midst of all of this controversy— Berkeley? Is that what you—did you mention Berkeley? It had happened in Berkeley okay. earlier this week, last yeah. night. I, I think it kept going in Berkeley. I, I also heard something about Oakland. 
And um, anyway, so, the, you know, within this discussion about the police murdering people, Eric Garner was choked to death by a cop in New York City. And the grand juries are not indicting. Grand juries won't indict the police no matter how awful they seem to be. There's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of questioning, you know, what can fix this? Is this fixable? Is there anything that can, you know, if not fix it, can it reduce the violence? And Mark Edge and the Obama administration have come forward with an idea to put cameras on all the police officers. I'm going to side with Mark on this one. I think that— and don't forget the Obama administration. Which is, Say it with me, and I'm going to side with the Obama administration. <laughs> on, on this one, I think it's a good idea. I, you know, not even a b- broken clock can strike right a couple times a day. And in this particular case— Well, I, I don't support the Obama administration's uh, choice of cameras. The one that they showed has an off button, one. which um, I understand why they would want an off button. Like, you know, maybe you don't want to be seen while you're going pee-pee or something like that. But Oh, who cares? Uh, I, I, you don't care. Um, <laughs> but I, I, at the same time, I think that the audio and video ought to be streamed. What I'd really like to see is an America where we just don't trust what police officers say— Unless they've got some plausible reason for um, not having video, or they have video and audio. Well, certainly the tides seem to be changing It has to how Americans feel about police officers. They're more willing to get out on the streets and protest now than ever before. And some are saying, I saw an article uh, where, I forget it was, but uh, somebody was saying that the protests have yet to really come on hard. And he's expecting to see more of them soon. We're coming up here. This is Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. (coughs) But don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four-herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. There is no such thing as attention span, according to Jerry Seinfeld, who figures that people have an infinite attention span if you are entertaining them. Hey, he's kept us from channel surfing for several decades, and now he's making more millions as a Las Vegas headliner. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're looking for work. So choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Avoid redundancies such as added bonus, advance warning, end result, prior history, or personal belongings. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit weusecoins.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to take control of the airwaves. It's a toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Many are discussing the idea of police cameras mounted to the officer as a possible fix for some of the police abuse that we're seeing out there constantly that, of course, the police seem to have no accountability for whatsoever, even in the cases where there's video. So, of course, that's one of the arguments that I've heard against police having cameras is, well, there's already video of police murdering people and they get away with it. And that's a strong point. There's no doubt about that. But I still think it's not a bad idea to have an extra angle on it. We can get into the details on this here because Johnny Ray seems to be opposing the idea of police cameras. I definitely think the cons outweigh the pros. We'll get into that uh, deeper here, and uh, you can join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Please, if you want to support what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, if you like the fact that we're talking about liberty, but we don't all necessarily agree on the show, one thing we do agree on is that more freedom, that's a good thing. If you like the ideas being put out there on what we have now, almost 160 radio stations from coast to coast, maybe you'd like to see us with uh, 300 radio stations. I Sure would. We can do that. It's possible, but it takes money to market Free Talk Live. And that's why we have the AMP program. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. The five bucks a month that you can send into the AMP program, we invest into the show to get on more stations, more internet connections, into more ears all around the world. So if that's worth five bucks a month to you, please support the show through the AMP program by going to amp.freetalklive.com. You can use any major credit card through PayPal. You can also use uh, Visa and MasterCard right on our website through amp.freetalklive.com to get perks like the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only Facebook group, and more. Again, go to amp.freetalklive.com as we go to you with your calls and thoughts. Uh, first, let's talk to, uh, let's go to James in Franklin, Tennessee. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, James. Hello. Hey there. How are you? Good. Go hey, ahead. Hey, I'm the chairman of the Libertarian Party in uh, Williamson County, Tennessee. All right. And, uh, and the vice chairman and the secretary. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, yes, we meet in the phone booth, and I couldn't find one. <laughs> now we have we have uh, we have a couple members, and uh, we're we're building it up. And I, I was on the state committee uh, as well, and became a libertarian about eighteen months ago. I in my twenty, I'm sixty three years old. And in my twenties, I was uh, a liberal Democrat with long hair and. And I became an independent, and then I became a Republican, and then I got tired of what's going on in Washington, and so I became a libertarian. I've read read many books. I talked to Wes Benedict, and I think the Libertarian Party, I think there should be uh, more than two voices in this country. But I want to talk about amnesty. Um, I uh, purchased, I work uh, at a, a upscale hotel in Franklin. And I purchased for a young Hispanic man uh, the immigration uh, DVD so that he can become a citizen. And I think that is the way that we should become citizens of this country. You purchased now, a DVD? My... Yes, there's a DVD. What, what does it do exactly? D... What does the DVD do? Yeah. The DVD gives you the questions. There are 100 questions. If you get 20 of them right, if you get 20 of them right, you pass that test. If so it's like a study guide? Get, it's a study guide. It's a DVD. Gotcha. And he's a Hispanic guy, and he goes to me, Jimbo, you're local. I say, no, I'm not local. 
who was the first president of the United States? He goes, I don't know. I say, George Washington. Not really true, though. George Washington. <laughs> John Hanson? Yeah, there, was a, there were presidents George before George Washington. He goes, I say, who was the 16th president of the United States? He says, Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln. I said, that's right. So the what DVD you're saying is, is your immigration direct. So hold on, I'm mean, I'm just curious Pass though, James. The new I U.S. Know... citizenship test. Yeah. That's how you solve the immigration problem. Um, I don't DVD know. I don't. As a, I would think hold as on. a libertarian, I want to hear the proposal. Hold. Uh, what's does the, the DVD proposal? come with twelve thousand dollars? Because you're paying what? thousands no, of dollars. I'm not trying to sell the DVD. No, I'm no, no. Let the guy tell me what is the proposal. So. Everybody's got to answer 100 questions right, and anybody can answer those 100 and 20 questions. questions. 20 questions. I thought it was 100. He said they 20. Give you the questions. He said there's 100 they give you questions. The questions. You get 20 right. Okay. Yeah, you get 20 right, you walk out of the room. I'm a licensed insurance agent in the state of Tennessee. Okay? Now, this isn't how it's it is. Fantastic. You're proposing this? No, it's the one law. That's the way it is. Right, but you have to pay thousands of dollars to get to that point if you are in, you know, able to get through whatever the queue of people that is waiting in advance of you. I mean, it's not easy exactly. to get to take this I, no, quiz. No, 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 no. I understand. No, no. I didn't say it was easy. Okay. What I'm saying is it could be easy. Okay. And all you have to do is pass a two test. Now, the problem is, in my opinion, the Hispanic community, um, and there are some very, very fine people in the Hispanic community that have been here for years and are small business people. There's an Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. You know, yeah. They, they, but you know what they did? They learned English. If, no. if the three of us flew to Mexico City and decided to be there, what would we do? We would learn Spanish. Over time, if sure. We went to Italy. We would learn Italian. Yeah, naturally, uh, immigrants do English. tend to uh, learn English over the generations as they come here to the United yeah. States. So, what I'm curious, I guess, to know, James, is you joined the Libertarian Party, right? Yeah. Now, when you joined the Libertarian Party, you did sign the statement that said you don't support or advocate the initiation of force to achieve political or social goals. Correct. What's that mean? You did sign the statement, though, didn't you? Must have. It's the chairman. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but I don't know what you mean by what you just said. Well, it's this. It's the. This is the pledge that you. At least back when I joined the Libertarian Party, uh, you know, a long time ago, that you had to sign in order to join the party. It was one of the things that kind of separates them from Republicans and Democrats, or at least in theory, it should. Uh, the statement means that you don't support. It says that you don't support or advocate the initiation of force that is to start aggression with somebody. Uh, in order to achieve political or social goals. So a political goal... Exactly. Of course. Would, of course. So you agree with that statement? Yes. Okay. So then you wouldn't have a problem then with somebody just coming here for the hell of it and not following the bureaucrats' rules, right? Like, you know, if they just wanted to come here and make a better life without having to jump through a bunch of hoops. They should jump. I mean, they should... They should I feel... I feel... And this may not be the party line, because I've only been a member for... I don't know, 18 months, and I've read a lot of books, and mm -hmm. I've gone to the state conventions, and I'm trying to organize it locally. I mean, I, I think there should be, if you want to come to this, when, when my great-great-grandfather came here in 1840, okay, there was no immigration thing. They, right. they let Germans in. Well, he was a shouldn't dumb it be that German. way now? He was not a dumb, he was a very intelligent German. He was a stonemason, and guess what he did? He worked his butt he off, went, and he made a better life for everybody. No, you're doing right. And yep. he was 40 years old, and a rich dude in Pittsburgh, okay, paid so, him $750 well, to replace his son in the Civil War, and he was killed in the Civil War. Wow. Okay? But guess what his grand, grandson did? He became the first city planner for the city of Pittsburgh, my grandfather. Oh, I'm very, very proud, proud of. of that. Well, I, I, you know, I'm and I mean, very proud of. It, it, it is something to be proud of. But I want to. Here, here's what I think. I think that countries are tax farms, and they use us as tax cattle. I don't particularly care if one of the cows jumps the fence and intends to live a better life on this side of the fence. I will agree, I agree. with you that I shouldn't have any obligation to, uh, you know, for tax money to go feeding and caring for and giving welfare and That's educating exactly. and all that stuff. I think if you want exactly. to come here, I I, you make I a better life for yourself. Send, send them, look, you got to go back. 
if you don't pass the test within a certain period of time. Well, that's where the force comes in, and I think that look, I can I can kind of understand James. No, no, I well, this this was an issue that I had when I was not, becoming a. This, this was an issue I had when I was becoming a libertarian, uh, James, is that uh, I didn't really understand this issue. But what I did understand when I signed the Libertarian Party statement was that I was then refusing to use force to support. I would not support the use of force I to achieve political I don't want to throw them back. I just think there should be a litmus test. You, you have to do something to become a citizen of this country. Well, I don't well, want I think to be a citizen. I think the litmus test should be— can you earn enough money to live? Because I don't think there should be anything given away for fine. free. And the litmus that test will be, be yeah. So just you know, will you make? Are you are you living on your own? And uh, I don't think you yeah. need to be admis- administering any kind of test whatsoever. I'm if saying life here, okay, will give its fine. own okay, test. You convinced me. You changed my mind. Okay, I was a I was a cashier at Kroger, and this lady comes in. I had just gotten my paycheck. It was six hundred dollars for the month. Okay, the lady came in, and she was on food stamps. She had two kids, and the, and the bill ran up to five hundred and forty dollars. That's an absolutely true statement. Yeah, it's a problem with the welfare system, no doubt about that. And of course, libertarians don't support government taxes in the first place. Uh, I thank you for the call tonight, James. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number eight fifty-five four fifty free. I think he's got good intentions. Uh, But it's an an example that you can become the chairman of the Libertarian Party and not really understand the statement you even signed. It's sometimes Uh, more coming up on Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top-quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, December 8th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,192, silver around $16.28, and Bitcoin is trading around $373. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Bee is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Bee. Or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat to receive a 10% off listener discount on your next purchase. In the news, on Sunday, former CIA Director Michael Hayden claimed the CIA never lied about his torture program, as alleged by Senate Democrats. Hayden appeared on CBS's Face the Nation, claiming that waterboarding was no longer used when he served under the last years of the Bush administration. 
Hayden's statements come as the Senate Intelligence Committee prepares to release its report on the CIA's use of torture techniques. The report is expected to find that the CIA went beyond the law and lied to the White House, Congress, the Department of Justice, and the agency itself. Chicago activists believe they have proof of the local police using Stingray technology to monitor their phone conversations at protests. A video released Friday by hacktivist group Anonymous claims that audio of a phone conversation between officers shows them discussing using cell phone monitoring tools on organizers. At one point, the officers can be heard discussing a woman who is on the phone, asking the other officer whether or not they were picking up any information on where the protest was headed. Activists also posted pictures of a vehicle they believe may have been using some type of signal disruption technology. Indigenous activists in New Hazleton, British Columbia, closed down Highway 16 Saturday to protest recent approvals for two natural gas pipelines. The pipelines would run through Getson territory. The local chiefs say the projects threaten the salmon population and the community's livelihood. The Liberty Bee is sponsored in part by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your message or product? The Liberty Bee is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To inquire further, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Monday, December 8th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Police fired tear gas at hundreds of protesters in Oakland, California, after it was alleged that explosives were thrown at highway patrol officers Sunday night. Meanwhile, the Oakland Tribune reports that at least three police officers and a technician were injured and six arrests made Sunday night in Berkeley, California, as a result of similar protests calling for police reforms. On Sunday, Mexico's Attorney General Jesus Murillo stated that evidence confirmed that 43 student teachers were incinerated at a garbage dump by gang members. Murillo stated that Austrian experts tested a bone fragment from a bag of ash that was found and found a match for one of the students. The Argentine forensic anthropology team also helped with the forensics and cautioned that the search for the missing should continue because of a lack of sufficient evidence. The students have been missing since September 26 from Aguala, Mexico. Over the weekend, six men were transferred from the military prison in Guantanamo Bay to Uruguay to be resettled as refugees. The men were held for more than 12 years, but never charged. The deal was negotiated by the Pentagon and the government of Uruguay. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Rogers criticized the transfer, saying that foreign governments are often ill-equipped to monitor the former prisoners. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. Comedy-minded, but liberty-focused. Corey and his guest hosts tackle the topics of the day from a liberty perspective. The Corey Moore Show. Catch it live each Friday night at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, December 8th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A fully leveled up video game character marvels at how far he's come. And the milk rushing through a jug handle is having the time of its life. This is the Onion Week in Review. This week, top executives from the U.S. financial sector announced they're about ready to ruin the world again. Representatives from all major banking and investment institutions said that more than enough time has passed since they last caused a major global economic meltdown and confirmed they're pretty much fully prepared to bring about a brand new worldwide financial crisis. We feel like we've given people enough time to get comfortable again. Consumer spending has increased. Housing market has rebounded. So yeah, we're all set to go ahead and ruin the global economy again. And in other news, the perfect gift for a local man is unfortunately a gift certificate to Lowe's Cinemas. Mall shoppers look on in awe as a helpless 15-year-old girl is viciously torn apart by a pack of her peers. And a drunk pilot decides to pull over onto a cloud until he sobers up. You will now hear three gong strikes and a recitation of the great chant before being ushered to the hallowed garden. For more, keep checking theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. Thank you. 
It's Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. Plenty of time for you to bring up anything you'd like. 855 450 free. That is the toll free number. We've got Skype. Our Skype username here is lrn.fm with you in studio tonight. You've got Ian, Johnny Ray, and Mark. Cameras, cop cameras, the proposal to have cameras on police officers. Johnny Ray says he is opposing. Uh, that proposal, as I understand it, and I'm a bit of a supporter, so we'll get into that here in a moment. But first, your calls and thoughts. Ryan, listening in Pennsylvania, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Ryan. Hi, how are you guys? Hey, good. Go ahead. Just, uh, I got to go with Johnny on this as uh, as being opposed why? to uh, the, the cop body cameras, and here is why. Um, first, I'll say that I, I think that it's great that you have opposition on the show so that it's not just a direct one side of the coin type of point of view. That's a, that's a positive thing. Yeah, we do usually, our best. Usually I'm a gotcha. bootlicker for Ian and Mark, but today, not not tonight. This stops uh, now. Today, baby. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but as, it, as far as the why I'm in, a, in opposition of it is, if you look at it, one of the many cases uh, in police brutality, uh, specifically to single out Eric Garner's case, you see a, a cut and dry kind of slam dunk case if this isn't pertaining to, to the state where the NYPD, he was uh, choked out and it cost him his life. That wasn't a legal chokehold that was banned by the New York Police Department in 1993. This was on plain as day, broad daylight video from a kid that was filming it from about 12 feet away. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the, the coroner for NY rules it a homicide and there's still no grand jury indictment. But isn't it funny that they, they the grand jury did indict the kid that filmed it? Yeah. Yes. I don't see how a body camera on a cop, when you're looking at, at murder in broad daylight on a busy New York street, how a body camera is, is going to do anything about that. It's still going to be owned and operated by the state. They still have the ability to turn them off and on whenever they want. That much and is they true. Will manipulate it. But, they will manipulate any video or audio footage as they see fit. They benefit only the They do that with their dash cams. The they absolutely do. But uh, to some extent, those dash cams have gotten us video in the past of, uh, you know, police officers kicking people in the head and doing all kinds of stuff. And, Violating anally and vaginally people. That's been shown on dash cams. Right. And it's not every piece of video doesn't get out. There's no doubt about it. I wouldn't even venture to say that half of them get out. But a lot get gets out. And that has brought us to the point where we are here today in 2014. If you'll recall, we've been doing this show for 12 years now. Um, if you'll recall 10 years ago, this conversation wasn't going on. I don't think it was really going on two years ago. You know, that police officers may be overstepping their bounds, there needs to be some le uh, level of accountability, that uh, police aren't policing their own. That conversation, it wasn't going on, and it's going on for a reason. And I would suggest the reason is, is because of the video. Both done by activists right. and being done by the police officers themselves. I mean, I tend to agree with Ryan where he's where he's coming from in that I don't think having a camera on the cop who was choking out Eric Garner was going to change one way or the other how things played out as far as the lack of an indictment by the grand jury. But 10 Eric Garners later, it may. Well, but also there are examples, as we pointed out, where dash cams have resulted in officers being, you know, getting in trouble for misbehavior. Um, sure, there are instances where the camera footage disappears, but there are instances where the police's own footage does allow them to be held accountable. So that's that's undeniable. And, uh, you know, in addition to that, you do have the statistics, the very early statistics. Mark, you cite them all the time from Rialto, California, where use of force uh, reports against the police went down dramatically and reports by the police themselves. Uh, I've got some, some, some good reasons why I'm very, very highly skeptical of that study of those reports. Right, well, hold we'll on relate later. I want to get yeah, I want to get Ryan's opinion on some of that stuff. Well, I wanted to uh, well, specifically the examples that the police having cameras already has resulted in police being held accountable in some instances, not all of them, but, you know, in some instances. And that also, you know, that it has allegedly reduced the instances of use of force by police. I, I think that, that there might be a, a clear purpose for them as far as shedding light uh, into certain details of a case that may be made. But the point that I have is that if the state is for the state, 
I don't see how camera or video evidence in, in a court case is going to do anything to hold it. It's more than about court. It's point. about the public, a court of public opinion as well. And in an instance where if you have somebody on the streets who's being a, a, a molested, a, attacked, a harassed by a police officer, and that officer gets video and that video comes out of that happening— if the person who was the victim did not have their own camera, then that gives us some level of an objective reality of what actually happened in that instance rather than just having to believe the cop's word or the victim's word. So having something there is better than nothing. And in the instance where you're dealing with a cop harassing somebody who knows better to, than to not have a camera, like an activist who actually does have a camera or two cameras, then that's an extra – it's a different angle on the interaction that could shed extra light. You already admitted that this could shed some light. And to me, that's what's important, is shedding light on these officers' actions. It's not perfect, but it's more light than— Perfect was, isn't an option. It's more light than was there previously, so why oppose it? Uh, again, like I, I know that I'm singling out the Eric Garner case, but that's really one of the most bold-faced things that we're seeing it's in, disappointing. in modern times. It, it's it not is, a reason to oppose it's an it's extra camera angle. Just because the grand jury is a disappointment to you doesn't mean that you shouldn't have more evidence of what actually happened so people can make their own minds up. Because people are making their minds up about the Eric Garner case regardless of what the grand jury decides to do. That's why there are people out in the streets in New York City and uh, Berkeley and right. all over the grand place. Grand juries weren't going to change anything anyway. Grand juries are designed not to change the state. But what changes right. the state over time is people being so activated that they're, you know, getting up out of their chairs and doing something. So anything that's causing that, I, I mean, people are shocked at this Eric Garner thing like you and I are. They're flabbergasted. Right. And flabbergasted people you know, they're they're never going to have the same faith in the government that they had before. Ryan, thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate it. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. We'll get into more Johnny Ray's reasoning here in a moment, but I want to bring Jeff on the line. You can bring up anything, and Jeff, you're in Philadelphia. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey there. Um, you know, in, in light of uh, what's coming out with the CIA and this you know, information on the torture stuff, you know, I just thought I'd bring up an interesting point that I've kind of had to grapple with um, as a, you know, anarcho libertarian, you know, dealing with torture in a stateless society. Um, and I think we we tend to kind of like avoid, you know, the uh, slippery slopes or the logical extremes of our ideologies. But, you know, I you know have to defend that torture might be a possibility in a, in a, uh, in anarchy. Well, how, how would it look? Um, first off, I think that uh, calling a free society anarchic uh, really does a disservice to the ideas um, of freedom because most people don't understand those terms. But how does this torture look? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if you're developing this free society on the basis of property rights, you know, if I commit a tort or I commit a crime against you and, uh, you know, you need rectification, like let's say I murder somebody in your family, um, you know, you could be justified in taking control over my property being my body if I've committed that type of crime. So, I mean, you could have situations where you have people, you know, killing other people uh, for rectification or even in certain cases torturing them. So, like the death penalty? That. Oh, I see. Okay, so let me give you an example. Um, out of Iran, which uh, has Sharia law, which allows for eye for an eye situation, a woman, uh, some some dude liked this girl, and she didn't like him back, so he decided the best course of action he could possibly come up with is to throw acid in her face, uh, resulting in her blindness. Um, she mm -hmm. had the option of either getting some kind of recompense or him going to jail or whatever. She foreswore all those things and said she wanted him to be blinded with acid. And as I understand it, she got it. I don't know. But I, the case was going up to, like, their Supreme Court or whatever. And, um, you know, the guy was going to get acid in his eyes. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah. And I, I don't think it's – I'm not, like, um, having trouble, like, coming to terms with it. I think I'm pretty solid. And I think – I mean, I understand it. It's just – as far as telling other people from, from the lens of property rights, being able to have this conversation, they're like, look – you know, in a society where we, we, we don't have a state, uh, I mean, obviously, people are going to be hopefully less evil and more understanding of property rights, so people won't be willing to do these kind of things. But is there justification in doing said things when crimes have been committed against them? And I think Hang the on, Jeff. Happen. We'll bring it back here in a moment to continue this discussion. This is Free Talk Live. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. You guys live in a dream world. No, sir, you're the one that lives in a dream world. You're the one that wants to have a police state in America where you get to determine who can come in and who can't. You want to have you border wanna patrols. You want to have checkpoints. This, you want to let the entire third world into this country? Sir, let me get, let, I'll answer that question by reading a short excerpt from a poem. Maybe you've heard of it. It happens to appear at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty. It was yeah, about. You're poor, you're tired, tired, huddled masses. Right. right. You are yeah, aware of it, yes. Let them come in legally. Well, no, get, come on, legally, <laughs> Lou. The legal is such a cop-out. No, hold on a second, because when your ancestors came across, and I don't know what they are, let's say they're Italian. When your ancestors came across, all they did was take you to Ellis Island, screw up your last name, sit you around for three days, and then bam, you're out the door. Now legal is a huge pile of paperwork and tens of thousands of dollars. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free. Bring up anything here at 855-450-FREE. Police cams are turning out to be controversial, even within the Liberty Movement, even within the studio. Uh, Johnny Ray says they are not such a great idea. And I'm thinking, how? Well, you know, why not? What does he know? He's the janitor. Johnny Ray is a very wise janitor. The as wise a janitor. Of fact. In fact. Uh, the toll free number is 855 450 free. <laughs> we also have Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And Mark Silver, it's cheap. 
Well, it's gold uh, leaf is even cheap. It seems like compared to where it's been. Indeed, uh, it's a good time, I think, to get metals. Uh, I believe they're poised to go upward. As a matter of fact, their silver's gone up a bit since I advised this the first time. So, it might be a time to get on that train. You can go to gold.freetalklive.com and get some great rates on gold and silver. I think the most important part in getting, you know, going on the internet and getting good rates is making sure you're going to get your 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 uh, metal in hand. Yeah, not like a piece of paper claiming it's sitting in a vault Not somewhere. a piece of paper, and sometimes you just don't get it. If you keep on looking and looking for that low rate, uh, sooner or later you'll find somebody who's willing to, to promise you a low rate and not deliver. Mm. So gold.freetalklive.com, we deal with Midas Resources, who uh, is our syndicate. We've been doing business with them for years, many years, decade now. Gold.freetalklive.com. All right, let's go back to Jeff in Philadelphia. You're back on Free Talk Live. You were talking about torture and suggesting that it might exist in a world without the state. Uh, you described that as anarchy. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the idea of anarchy. I like the idea of uh, self-rule as opposed to no ruler. I like ruling myself. And uh, I like the word anarchy because it's exciting. Yeah, I think let's it just get uh, caught up in this word, shall we? It has some bad connotations, like you know, bomb throwing and storefront window smashing, and I, I certainly don't want to be associated with that. But I think the point you make, and then let me see if I can recap it, and if I get it wrong, Jeff, please correct me if I'm wrong here. But your point would be that in the absence of this monopoly on violence that we know of as the state, that there could, in theory, be some sort of uh, protection agency, for instance, who does engage in torturing uh, suspects. And if all of these protection agencies were being funded on a consensual basis, meaning through customers who voluntarily agree to do business with these companies for protection's sake, uh, then in theory they could be even more of a rights-violating uh, group than, you know, than perhaps uh, than the government is today. Is that what you're saying? Actually, uh, you got the first part right, like 98% of it right. The part where you say that it They'd be more of a rights violating. I'm actually not agreeing with that. I think that what I'm saying is that from from the perspective of, of you know, as if you want to live in a state of society, basically we're we're relying on this idea that we're protecting private property rights or property rights. And you, I could, would argue, and I think to be logically sound and logically consistent, you'd have to argue that if if somebody commits a crime against you that you know hinders your body in in a certain way. You're able to get rectification or restitution, you know, upwards and even more than the crime that's been committed against you. So if somebody in your, you know, if you're murdered or somebody in your family's murdered, then you could be justified in actually murdering that person. So you're back. not talking about torture as much point. as you are talking about eye for an eye punishment, as Mark was suggesting earlier. Well, I just think that torture in general, you know, if you're if you're a tortured person, I, I I'm basically I'm just using torture as a way to talk about how how you know this idea of rectification in a stateless society. Is a, is a conversation that a lot of libertarians and people who advocate it for— You're talking for, about torture for the have. purpose of punishment as opposed to torture for the purpose of gleaning information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the context in which the CIA uses it is much different than that. It's similar to capital punishment I don't agree with because the state's enacting it. But if you do it in the form of you know, restitution or rectification, I, I think that's a conversation that's worth having. Well, right, and that is a conversation about the question of what's an appropriate punishment, what's a good way to make people whole. Is torturing the person who hurt your friend or your family member a good way to fill the hole that's inside of you as a result of that? I say no, but I think that you're correct in that if we don't have the state around and there is, a, let's say there's an area of the country uh, let, let's say, well, let's say that you know uh, Alabama secedes, and the folks in Alabama tend to agree that you should uh, do eye for an eye down there. I there's, don't know why you're picking Alabama. There's but go no ahead. reason why that they couldn't. I don't know. Maybe it's a Jesus thing. Um, but there's no reason why they wouldn't be able to implement something like that under a completely different system or under no system whatsoever. I mean, yeah, there's a possibility that could happen. I think. What do you guys think? I don't think it's a terrible idea to give victims different choices. Um, I think that you would be, you as a victim, would be better off with some kind of monetary payment going forward. I agree. Um, you know, and that there's some kind of money that will make you whole. But I think that a, you know, a, a percentage of people that choose the uh, the the, the uh, mutilation option might just add an extra little level of deterrence. Maybe I'm wrong on that because uh, the death penalty has been – I guess the death penalty has been shown to be a small deterrent but not an effective deterrent. Um, so maybe, 
you know, maybe it's worth uh, worth that. I don't know the answer to that, but um, but would that be possible under the absence of the state as we know it today? I anything's it possible. I mean, the only thing, basically, the uh, the death penalty uh, situation has been prohibited by the states in yeah. which it has been, you know, the governments in, in which it's been prohibited. I mean, I'm personally would, not for it, but I think it would be possible. I would go back to my from a few weeks ago. I think my theorizing of a system where we took a fraction of the resources that we currently spend on criminal justice and catching criminals for the broad variety of crimes that they can commit, taking a fraction of that, we could hire a team of people to keep track of honest-to-goodness criminals, violent people, Mm -hmm. thieves, people who have really committed crimes, who represent a tiny fraction of our prison population. And we we don't ever need to kill somebody or beat somebody about the head with a baton because we can stop most of the crime from happening. And that's what we Just really Just by keeping need. an eye on them is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah, I, I support solutions like what Johnny Ray I, is saying. I, I but think, I think if you live in, a, in an area where most people are bloodthirsty, then you're going to see a different, more violent system. I think and, that's true. Yeah, I, I think— That's why we need to get people of a like mindset together. That's, uh, that's I think, intentional communities like that, like the Free State Project, uh, are a good solution towards having a more peaceful society in the future because I a think A few Jeff's people shot something. during burglaries might run down burglaries in a neighborhood. Jeff, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Steve is in St. George, Utah, listening to KZNU. Hello, Steve. Hey. Hey, Steve. While you guys were talking to the uh, caller before this last one, um, you were talking about the, the cops wearing cams, and you just glossed over a concept that I, I mean, uh, it just came to me because I was listening, not talking, I think. But, you know, they... They they were talking that the fact that the cop the, with the uh, the Eric Garner, Garner situation, the, yeah, with Garner situation, the, that that video yielded nothing. That's not true at all. The only reason we know that he was strangled was because of the that video. I think the allegation was that the video did not lead to legal consequences, but as I pointed out, the video has definitely led to people changing their mind about the police and being shocked and shocked into uh, taking action, and uh, so was, I think it was important. And it was a video made by a non-cop. That well, video true. wasn't made by a, a, co- a camera mounted on a police officer. But it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't right. have made the situation worse had we did have the second video. Had we, you know, if we right. did have. Exactly. It could have a chilling effect on the citizens. Steve, if you want to hang on, we'll camera bring it back man. here in a moment. A- we'll bring it back for further comments. 855 450 free. I don't see how that would be a chilling effect on people carrying video cameras either, unless they get complacent. Put your camera away. I got the camera. We're coming up. Put your camera away. On Facebook, on the news, and in conversations with friends, we're bombarded every Every day with advice on how to be healthier, from gluten-free and non-GMO diets to how much exercise and sleep the body needs. But how much have you heard about alkalizing the body? AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are a holistic and natural way to get your body's pH levels back in balance. Just a few drops in water will help your body rid itself of harmful waste. And even the healthiest of diets can be complemented with your daily use of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops. Who isn't looking for more vibrance, vigor, and energy? Now buy two bottles of AlkaVision. Vision Plasma pH drops and get $10 off your order. Visit AlkaVision.com or call 800-518-7615. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops are packed with a powerful combination of the most alkaline minerals and compounds. Open the door to greater health, vitality, and zest for life. Alkalize your body, supercharge your health. Call 800-518-7615 or head to AlkaVision.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? 
The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. Police cameras, subject of controversy even here within the studio. Uh, Johnny Ray has some bullet points that he wants to go over here that he has been jotting I wrote them all by myself. About why he thinks that the police cameras are not such a great idea. And I say, you know what, what's wrong with having another angle on things? Uh, and you're welcome to give your thoughts. Uh, Mark has yet to really chime in on this. Uh, the oh, I've been a huge supporter of police cameras, but I would like to hear what Johnny Ray yes. has to say. The toll-free number tonight only is to jeer at him. <laughs> 855-450-FREE. Also, uh, you can go to LegalZoom.com to help you incorporate your business. Business, among other things like patents, wills, trademarks, etc. Uh, you can go there and save $10 off your order with code FTL, like Free Talk Live, at LegalZoom.com. As we go back to Steve, he's listening in St. George to KZNU. Steve wanted to make sure you had a chance to get your thoughts out on the police body cams. Go ahead. Do we have Steve? Steve. I, I agree. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I agree with, with Johnny Ray, just as we were going to the break, he was saying, well, the cops might just say, well, we've got our cameras, but there's a way. And, you know, that's no different than them saying, no, you don't have a right to video us, you know, go put your camera away. Right, well, which they do now. Way, in Illinois, yeah, they, um, they they had made fel it was a, it was a felony to record police officers. Now the Illinois Senate is introducing a bill to make it even worse <gasps> after it's been overturned by oh, a God. court. So I think this is absolutely true. What you're pointing out is that uh, you know the the executive and the legislative branches really don't want to be held uh, accountable. Judicial seems to have uh, to support people using cameras. But, I, you know, they're doing what you're suggesting today. They're t police are telling people to put their cameras away today. They're right. saying ridiculously. And, they will be able to, to, and, and if they have a camera on them, they will be able to say that more easily. Well, they can say right now, they can say, I thought it was a gun and shoot you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. It's... And that's, that's, that's bullet point number one. All right, Steve, final thoughts. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, my final, my final point was that. Um, without that video camera there in on um, uh, in New York City, then 
they, the cops could have said and most likely would have said anything, and, and we wouldn't have necessarily heard. That right, that so that's the hold. reason to have at least yep. one camera at every police interview, at every police stop. Thanks, Steve, for your call tonight, because the cops will say anything, Can and they will anything. be believed. Can say anything and will be and believed. And frequently do lie on the stand. That's not an uncommon thing to have happen. If you don't have any kind of independent verification of what happened, which is what video can provide, granted, one camera angle does not give you a true perspective on the situation. So, for instance, you know, if you're, if you're in front of my camera, when you're looking at the video, you can't always judge distance. You know, based, you know for instance, the camera sure. might be zoomed in a little bit, but even if it's not zoomed in, just the way the lens works, collecting the photons that go in, it's just it's hard to really tell sometimes they have 3D. how close people are. Not necess- That's not what I'm referring to, Mark. Um, but no, we're not talking about having the police have th- having 3D cameras. That would be really expensive. Uh, but my point being that if you have a second angle of looking at the person who is looking directly into the camera, then you can see how close that person actually is. So the more angles we have, the better idea of that we can put together as far as what actually happened in that event. Johnny Ray, go ahead. Do your best to pitch me on this because, you know, I'm a critic of the police. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I want the police to be good guys. I mean, I want them to go after the real criminals. And I don't see how having cameras on the police is going to hurt people, um, except for the ones who might otherwise lie about what the police did. There are certain people who will tell lies just like the police will tell lies, and those people will not be as successful about lying about what the police did. But that's another issue. So go ahead. All right. Well, my first point is what I brought up last week. Obama's plan, for example, uh, is a $63 million plan, I think. I thought it was $200 million, but okay. There's a there's he a could co- pay for it by counting. the way uh, by releasing nonviolent criminals from federal prisons if that's what he wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. There's there's bullet point number one is police opacity. Ian, what is opacity? You cannot see through it. Right. Police opacity is really not the problem with the police. The problem with the police is they're unaccountable. The problem with the police is they're Authority rests on your fear. The problem with the police is that they pull you over and menace you with a gun and you pay them because you're afraid. Mm-hmm. And police cameras they won't don't that. address that at all. But that's and not that a problem the, with the camera. That, is the, that aspect of the police is where all of the other problems come from. Okay, that may be true, but that's not a problem with a camera. That's not a reason to okay. not have the camera. The problem with the camera is it has costs. You've been talking— if, if, Sure. If, if, if the camera was nothing but some good— if, if it was nothing but that, then I'd be for it. But there's are you talking cost. about money. You're you, talking about money. If you could, if the money—that's an example. Okay, so if it was yeah, you sponsored, have to, yeah, before you can put a camera on a cop, you got to rob somebody to pay for it. The fact is, they're already going to rob people. They're going to have the money anyway. Would you rather them spend a million dollars on a camera system or a million dollars on another bear cat and some machine guns? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to spend a million dollars on a camera and a million yeah. dollars on the bear cat. <laughs> That much That's is true. true, but I, I think that this is the uh, this is the libertarian uh, uh, tail chasing argument. Well, we can't support any incremental change that uh, benefits. We can't. You're making the police larger. What if it were supported by They're voluntary not... contributions? What if people? What if some sponsor? That would be stepped much up? more be okay edible that? for me. Yes, okay. that would be much more amenable to me. Uh, I, look, I'm with you, Johnny Ray. I like the idea of you know people voluntarily funding the police department, but unfortunately, but at they this time we don't have that, and, and they wouldn't do it because it's because it's it's creating the it's enhancing the panopticon that we're living in. It's 1984, and you want it to be a little more like that. You want is this the third point? Because that's a good point. Yeah, but, this is this, know, is, yeah, this is my my next bullet point. Right, is that you're putting cameras on police that this increases and, the surveillance state yes yeah and they that's can, an argument they can they can team this up with facial recognition software and you know it's a field day for the feds yeah i see that that uh, i i see that and it's it's one of these difficulties sadly we live in a world where there are organizations that claim a monopoly privilege in the use of violence in a given land mass and we have to figure out ways to try to control those organizations i don't think that any of those ways is going to be perfect but um what we know what happens when we try your plan which is to not have cameras right 
we we know what the results are. The results are the crap we've got today, where cops operate like it's 1963 in 2014 when everybody's carrying around a camera on them um, that I'm supposed to believe the word of some government bureaucrat, largely unaccountable government bureaucrat, just because they said they did something when they could have video evidence of it. I want to know when the crimes have been committed. I want to know when my government employees are doing a good and a bad job. I think the situation will largely be the same because the problem stems not from inadequate technology. It stems from uh, inappropriate psychology and ethics. The Alto California shows that it will not be the same. That there's the, evidence that the Johnny Ray is going the, to deny those statistics. The Rialto study was conducted by the chief of the Rialto Police Department, who okay. was who was working on a degree from Cambridge University. So I suspect that his officers were they knew that they were being part of a study. It was not scientific at all. So their behavior was their situation was different from a, from a normal guy who's living a year after we've got nationwide police coverage. Yeah. This guy is wearing a camera, and probably nobody's going to watch the footage. The officers in Rialto knew that they were they were guinea pigs in their chief's um, college experiment. Well, but how many times can you get a... This is what I want to know. Is how many times can you have a use of force complaint against a police officer, and we lost the footage? Because, I, I mean, that... That story just doesn't hold water. We get footage from dash cams. We don't get all the footage, but we get some of the footage. I'm not claiming that this is a panacea, and I'm not claiming it's going to fix everything. But if it fixes some things, if it changes people's attitudes on law enforcement officer officers, uh, law enforcement, um, the concept, to some extent, I think that's a net plus. And I think what you're saying, Johnny Ray, in this case, is that the officers were behaving differently because they knew there was a study going on. This was a new thing. Yeah. Officers are behaving differently because they have cameras not on in them. Oakland, there's, they're there's not. Vi- I got video footage of an officer radically changing how he behaves before he turns his own camera on. Uh, there's more coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Chuck Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream back pain cream at Walgreens. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com and the monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but enough time for you if you get on the line now at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And inviting you to our website at freetalklive.com. If you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, then get your shopping done. Get your holiday shopping taken care of uh, all at once by going to shop.freetalklive.com. You'll find links there to Amazon and some other places. You shop in through those Amazon links, and Free Talk Live will get, you, uh, will get a co- portion of the purchase price. We've got Amazons for the U.K., for Canada, and for the United States. Just get your shopping done at shop.freetalklive.com. It's the same great deals you're used to from Amazon, the same free super saver shipping, Amazon Prime, the huge selection, the reviews, everything that you're used to. You're just entering through our affiliate links. So Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. Start your shopping, please, at shop.freetalklive.com. We've been talking about body cams. I'm going to get to your thoughts here, but I want to make sure Johnny Ray has a chance to get his full set of points out. Uh, we've hit up, what, about three out of your five points so far, Johnny Ray? On we've why we've you, hit two. Why you think body cameras for police are not such a great idea. Right. Number one, by, uh, police opacity is not really the problem. Police accountability is. They are funded by your fear, and that's the root of the problem. Cameras don't address that. Number two, this just contributes to the panop- to George Orwell's panopticon that we're all afraid of. That's your most por- persuasive point so far, I think. To me. To me. Uh, yeah. Number three is a question. Will police cams kill, quote, citizen cams? Ian, you and I have the same feelings about the word citizen, so I'll say non-cop. It's what I was saying before. I hope not, but I suppose that it could be a chilling effect on, oh, well, I don't need to have a camera now because the cops have them. I don't think people trust uh, the police with the footage in I many cases. I hope not. I hope they don't. And I think that the 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 the, the citizen cameras, uh, photography is not a crime dot com and so forth. This trend is delightful and it's. It's growing, mm-hmm. and that's fine. We have that. We need it. We don't need the government to come in and arrogate that duty to themselves. Well, I, there's an argument you're making there, but I, I, I'm i going to take Mark's side on this one and say that uh, the, the motivation for people to have their own cams will not be stopped by the police having their cams. But I suppose there's an argument that can be made that maybe it will stop some people. Okay. Uh, number four, pretty simple. Video is not reality. Uh, it's true. It can be it, manipulated. Uh, a lot of people may be under the impression that a that a cop camera is going to give them 100% of the story, and it's not. It's going to be subject to interpretation, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And it'll only give you you know, that perspective. It won't give you a more it, – it'll give you that, that front-on view of what's happening, but you won't necessarily see things from an alternative perspective. Right. If a cop an, an individual's is, camera could give you. For example, if a cop is wearing a, a cop camera – and he's right up on the suspect. He's beating somebody, saying "Stop resisting! Right. Stop resisting!" You won't you necessarily, necessarily see, yeah. yeah, you won't necessarily see the blows uh, connecting in that case. 
Uh, my but fifth... beforehand, you may know whether or not the, you know, see how the suspect reacted. True. Because... You might see if the suspect pulled a gun or something right. sure. like that. All the, sure. all those things are it is, valuable. It is additional information, and I think that's you guys' point. Okay. Uh, my final point is it creates a few hundred million, at least a few hundred million dollars worth of inefficient market activity. After, if we want to put cameras on all the cops, we're going to have Taser International, mm-hmm. uh, their stock That's their company. Yeah. Their, according to Business Insider, their their shares of Taser International spike after Ferguson unrest. Mm. There's going to be three or four companies who are not electronics companies, who are, who are not who are not camera makers, who are going to be given the plum job they're going to be given all that money to make cameras for people it's going to th- these programs are going to em- enrich uh the politically enrich connected the politically connected corporations i don't disagree with that statement That's i think true. you're probably right that it will be outfit them and but taser when you say, is already doing that when you say that this is inefficient market uh activity i agree with you on that um, we shouldn't need this, but there's the with the police goes a great deal of inefficient market activity. You're not talking about a large percentage of police budgets here. I'm not, I, I, and this could be addressed by saying, hey, um, you know, maybe we pare down. I don't know. Uh, you know, in some other place. So the fact that we know how this is going to go doesn't necessarily. Uh, mean that uh, it's a bad I- it's a bad idea just because the government will not release a bunch of uh, nonviolent criminals in order to pay for the cameras that they're going to put on cops does not mean that that in and of itself is a ba- is a reason not to do it. Let's- there will be people. There will be people who uh, who have who are convicted of crimes that they otherwise wouldn't have been convicted of because there is now evidence against them. That's true, um, and that's not so a problem. Well, well, that's not a problem if it's a crime that involves a victim. But if it is indeed a crime that does not involve a victim, then I can see how that that would be a concern. So it's not perfect. I'll agree with you there. And the idea that I this think will, you need, I think both of you guys need to do some serious libertarian soul searching. Oh God! The idea that this will, uh, you know, increase the surveillance state is, I think, the most legitimate point of all of those. Um, that's certainly true. Obviously, there's probably no plan right now to tie it into facial recognition, but five years down the road, maybe that won't be a, anything more than an upgrade to the Taser firmware on these devices, that mm-hmm. it could tie into some kind of database. And then as a cop's walking down the street, you know, Mike zooms yep. in on your face and, ah, this guy's They're wanted. already doing it with license plates. You know? uh, Tom is listening in Baltimore. He says he's a retired cop, has some thoughts on this. Tom, you're on Free Talk Live. You've given me a perfect segue with the last remarks. The whole body cam issue, in my opinion, absolutely cuts both ways. There's uh, a privacy issue. Uh, We're called to scenes that folks, uh, all of us, would not necessarily at times want to have permanently recorded in the public record, even if that record was set to be sealed. Um, There's also the whole legal jeopardy issue, like your guest just pointed out, relative to people being convicted of crimes. And that's where the sword really injures someone when it cuts in the opposite direction. You know, I know you guys have a, a, a dim view of police not all the time, but probably I would venture to guess that uh, you're you're more anti-police, or at least the way police are conducting themselves these days, mm-hmm. than you are pro. And and I, I have issues with how uh, policing has come about uh, and uh, as, as being applied myself. Um, I won't argue with you on that. Okay. Uh, I think. We have different issues that we disagree on, but it definitely cuts both ways. You know, we do cut a lot of breaks to people, favorable breaks. Uh, we exercise a lot of discretion. And When you say I, we, you're we talking about have, police? Yes, sir. Okay. You know, I don't have enough time to tell you how many times myself and my colleagues have cut tremendous breaks that really would get us in trouble if it were to come to light to people who we thought, 
deserved it um, for various reasons. And uh, so we're not always the bad guys. Um, so wait, are you suggesting uh, there that like if you pull somebody over for something and you cut them a break, that that might might uh, get you in trouble? Might get you as the officer in trouble if the video footage shows, well, this guy was definitely weaving in and out of traffic and this guy, you know, the cop didn't give him the ticket for that or something that that, that would uh, that yeah. would cause a problem? Absolutely. For minor things like that, and even serious things, you know, I, I worked one um, uh, area where we had a lot of college kids, and it wasn't a race thing at all, but we would catch kids with marijuana um, who were in college, um, even those who weren't in college just there to have a good time, and we knew they weren't bad people, mm -hmm. and we would, you know, ask them if they dropped it in the gutter and trounced on it with their boot if they would have a problem with that and of course they didn't have a problem with that and that was the end of the ordeal instead of having the person uh marred with a criminal record i think that's great i life. mean i have to say that you know when you're in a situation like that using discretion in that way i i think that's a nice you know appreciate that the officers that do that kind of thing but you know as an officer you do have discretion and you can make decisions like that are you saying that if that were to come to light that you would have faced some repercussions if say the police chief found out that you were doing that we could have been charged criminally absolutely Why? So what would the charge be the charge would have been destruction of uh cds in the case that i just pointed out to you destruction of what uh, it would have been cds what's that stand for a uh, control dangerous substance uh, drugs the marijuana so the destruction of it having the the well, person I mean, it's evidence destroy yeah, but okay, but you use discretion. That's interesting, though. I mean, I'll take your word for it that uh, Ian has read the uh, the police operating manual here in Keene, New Hampshire, and it says that the officers. I have not read the police operating manual here. So, in Keene. Okay, some something where but it it's says it's not that, uncommon to to hear the police have discretion and can utilize that. Discretion. Where it uses the the particular term discretion, so he's now of the opinion that they have discretion in everything. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a law in New Hampshire that says that if there's a felony, they must arrest. Hey, Tom, I wish we had more time for you, but thank you for sharing your thoughts here tonight. I appreciate the uh, the inside perspective kind of backing you up in some ways there uh, johnny ray yep all right we're out of time for tonight so there is some thinking that folks should do on this i'm still leaning in in the favor of it but i have the concerns about the panopticon uh point that johnny ray brought up so we'll come back with more tomorrow night freetalklive.com on free talk live we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day from wrestling superstars like glenn jacobs you guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, December 8th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,192, silver around $16.28, and Bitcoin is trading around $373. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Bee is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Bee or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Bee to receive a 10% off listener discount on your next purchase. In the news, on Sunday, former CIA Director Michael Hayden claimed the CIA never lied about his torture program, as alleged by Senate Democrats. Hayden appeared on CBS's Face the Nation, claiming that waterboarding was no longer used when he served under the last years of the Bush administration. Hayden's statements come as the Senate Intelligence Committee prepares to release its report on the CIA's use of torture techniques. The report is expected to find that the CIA went beyond the law and lied to the White House, Congress, the Department of Justice, and the agency itself. Chicago activists believe they have proof of the local police using Stingray technology to monitor their phone conversations at protests. A video released Friday by hacktivist group Anonymous claims that audio of a phone conversation between officers shows them discussing using cell phone monitoring tools on organizers. At one point, the officers can be heard discussing a woman who is on the phone, asking the other officer whether or not they were picking up any information on where the protest was headed. Activists also posted pictures of a vehicle they believe may have been using some type of signal disruption technology. Indigenous activists in New Hazleton, British Columbia, closed down Highway 16 Saturday to protest recent approvals for two natural gas pipelines. The pipelines would run through Getson territory. The local chiefs say the projects threaten the salmon population and the community's livelihood. The Liberty Bee is sponsored in part by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-242-2000.